I'm John Christensen. I'm the executive director of the Bill Lane Center for the American West at Stanford. And we're walking the farm today, uh, which is a 20, 21 mile walk around the big Stanford campus with about 8,100 acres in the middle of the Silicon Valley. And we use the campus on this occasion as a microcosm for thinking about the West. Climate change is certainly one of the major challenges facing the American West. And there's a lot of really interesting research uh, as well as uh, responses to climate change um, here on campus. Oh, oh. Oh, is that why you're doing it? Best things about the San Francisco system is that it's very high up in the Sierras. And that's really, really important, especially when the temperatures start rising. So the snowpack at those very high elevations will be affected eventually, but not immediately. So when we're looking at climate change in the next 30 years or three degree change or so, um, the shift of runoff will be earlier. So currently, <clears throat> the Sierra snow, snowpack is the huge basin of water. There aren't reservoirs that are holding all that. It's the snowpack that's holding the majority of the water that ends up in Hetch Hetchy. And as it's being used throughout the season, two and a half million people using that water in the Bay Area. We're incredibly uh, grateful to have you guys visit Jasper Ridge. Jasper Ridge, I think it's just a little less than a sixth of the university properties, is that right? Uh, <coughs> geographically. And uh, it's really unique among big American universities to be a, a fully functioning biological research station right on the core of a main campus. If you'd come here in like 1960s, this area right here would have had several thousand butterflies in it right now. And that was the Bay Checker Spot butterfly, which uh, is endemic to the Bay Area and it's now extinct on Stanford lands, uh, as well as on the whole peninsula. And the reason it went extinct is climate change. What's happened since the 1970s is that there's been a huge increase in the variation um, between years in rainfall, so that it's... Um, there's more really wet years, more really dry years, and so the butterflies are just getting yanked around, not doing very well in those years, and only having a few average years uh, in order to be able to survive. And that's what eventually drove them to go extinct. So this bird community that we're standing in has been studied at Jasper Ridge for quite a long time. When the first survey was done in the early 1970s, this was the most diverse bird community ever reported in the US at that point. Since then, there's been a lot of follow-up work done, and I did my honors thesis here as an undergraduate studying what's happened since the 1970s. What I found was that there were really quite striking declines, that it's not nearly as diverse of community as in the 1970s. The migratory bird species used to comprise about 50 to 60 percent of the bird community and now they're about 11 percent. The early estimates just based on only these effects of moving bird species ranges suggest that with kind of a mid-range climate change scenario, four to 550 land bird species could go extinct by the end of the century with an additional 2,000 being at a high risk of extinction. What you're looking at here is an effort that a number of colleagues and I have had underway for um, about 10 years now, actually we're in our 11th year of treatments, to try and, and actually project this little chunk of grassland about a hundred years into the future in terms of the climatic conditions that the grassland plots are experiencing. So in this uh, 
in the area of the couple acres right here, we have around 150 plots that are exposed to 16 different flavors of what the climate in 2100 might look like. This, this experiment started out trying to understand things mainly about biological diversity and carbon storage. As you probably know, ecosystems have been giving us a huge subsidy in climate change by taking up large amounts of CO2. We tried to understand whether that will continue in the future. The main result from this experiment is that it's not likely to continue in the future in a very big way, shifting responsibility back to human actions to decrease emissions.